All right, well, hello everybody and welcome back to another video. So as you can probably see, um, we have managed to complete an entire release from uh, Johnny Lightning. Being uh, <laughs> this is a, a two-year-old release, these are actually from 2021. Uh, this is 2021 Muscle Cars USA release number four. As you can see here, uh, I unboxed the version A release of this series a little while ago on the channel, but um, I do obviously have them all pulled out here. We have just recently completed the entire uh, the entirety of version B. I've actually, they're just now hitting the stores, the OK Used Cars release. So all these five I have found in a Target. Uh, that one I had to get on eBay because the scalpers usually suck the um, the IROC or the, uh, I think that's a Z28 actually, not an IROC. Yeah, it's a Z28. But uh, third gen Camaros get sucked up by scalpers usually pretty quick. And then also, if, uh, if you've been on the channel for a while, you've probably seen this guy. But um, I figured it was worth showing off. I can brush some of the dust off here. I do have a white lightning from this series. Uh, so this is version A. You can obviously see the difference in the colors on the box there. Um, but this is the white lightning variation of the version A 1997 Firebird Trans Am. So that is all three variations right there. Two in the box, one out of the box. Um, obviously, like I always say, my white lightnings do stay in the box, but I figured it would be pretty cool to pull that down and show that to you guys. Obviously, uh, the production number on this guy, 18,056, so if you do the 2% uh, math there, it's one of roughly 361. Pretty high production numbers on this release, as opposed to some other stuff that we've seen from Johnny Lightning in recent years. Um, I actually have an example right here, but real quick, I'm going to tell you why I have an example. Um, so very recently, I think it was on my last video, uh, somebody, uh, I believe the name is Mike Owens uh, or Michael Owens. I'd have to check. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, regular commenter, regular viewer. Uh, I, I see your comments quite often. We talked about a little bit about the Ford Galaxy. So I have here today, obviously, the version A of the Ford Galaxy from the OK Used Car release, uh, right here. Version B here. Um, did some searching and uh, managed to come up with another 1963 Ford Galaxy 500. Uh, same casting, different color, slightly different wheels. But uh, this is from the Cars and Coffee release. And as you can see, the production numbers on this guy are much, much lower. One of 4,000. But, uh, you know, the card's a little butchered out here on the end. So I guess I won't feel too bad about opening that, right? Um, so we'll be checking that out today as well. As this guy, a little bit older, but still very cool. Another 1963 Ford Galaxy. Um, the 63 Galaxy seems to be Johnny Lightning's favorite casting for the Galaxy. Uh, I was able to find the existence of a different year from Auto World. I think they have a, I want to say it's late later 60s uh, Ford Galaxy, but I was not able to get my hands on one for a uh, reasonable price. But we do get the little collector. Oh, it's a cardboard box on here, not a... Uh, not a tin, but we'll open that guy up as well. So we get some, uh, some Ford galaxies to look at here and some pretty nice, neat colors. But anyway, let's start getting into, um, our okay used cars here. We'll assemble our used car lot over here. We'll move our version a stuff out of the way for the time being. And, uh, let's, uh, here, I'm going to reorganize real quick and I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, so we're going to jump right into these guys. I've got uh, cars stacked up back here as opposed to being uh, across here. Um, I know that's what we're used to, but uh, it's just causing so much of a glare anymore. And with the new camera, I'm trying to kind of get an idea of what things look like without glares all over the place. So, anywho... 
Um, really, really good looking car. We've got our 1973 Pontiac Grand Am here in a very nice Mesa tan. That is our paint code there. Um, since I always forget to read you guys the paint code, I'm going to get that one right off the bat. Um, we'll take a peek under the back bumper here. It says Grand Am on the license plate there. Very nice looking car. I think this is, uh, I believe my fourth. I have like four of these Grand Ams. Uh, the 73 Grand Ams in my collection, including this blue one here. I have another blue one with a white top as well as... Oh, I'll show them to you. There's the blue one with the white top. I believe this is a Grand Am, right? I am Grand, yeah. I believe these were uh, released around the same time. The, uh, However, they were part of the Classic Gold series. This was actually one of the first cars in my collection here, this 73. The... Not a GTO license plate, yeah, obviously. Um, so what I would like to do is we'll put version B right here and we'll grab version A on our STP lift. Now obviously these are the same casting, but some slight differences. I do really like the pinstriping on the one here and the, the tan one on the left. Looks very, very nice. Um, however, the metal flake blue on our version A, if we, can we specifically, there we go, we'll focus on that one specifically. You can see the, uh, the metal flake in that blue there. Looks absolutely stunning under the lights. That is very nice. Um, anyway, back to our new one here. Heavy on the paint on this one. It almost seems like the uh, the paint on the side there is kind of covering up some of the body lines. That's kind of uncommon for Johnny Lightning. Usually they're pretty spot on with their uh, coats of paint. But anywho, very, very good looking car. I love the way that pinstripe wraps up around the window there. That looks really cool. Nice looking wheels on there. Tires aren't too rough. Eh, that one could use a little reshaping, I suppose. Mm. Eh. Let's take a peek underneath. We have uh, our manufacture date 9-1-2021. That should be the same as version A as well. Yeah, 9-1-2021. So I'm going to try to... I almost forgot. I'm going to try to go ahead and get the hood open here real quick. Okay, so the hood doesn't want to open too far. If we, What if we zoom in a little bit here? And then, as you can see by the badging on the front of the fender there, that is a Super Duty 455 under the hood there. If we bring our light, oh, look at that. There you go. Um, yeah, like I said, the hood doesn't really want to open an insane amount, but you can get a quite a good look in there at some of that detail, as well as the Pontiac badge on the, uh, the grill, or just above the grill there. Very, very nice. I'll go ahead and zoom back out here. Bring our light back to normal. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. I am absolutely loving the uh, the capabilities of this camera. The zoom and the, the focus quality. And it's just, I just got a new phone. I didn't actually get my... Uh, any kind of GoPro or anything. It's just a, uh, a Samsung Galaxy S23, the new one. And uh, yeah, I absolutely love the camera on this thing. Before I get too off on a tangent here, we will take a look at our card. Um, and it says our OK facts. Let's see if we can focus on them. There we go. Built on the A-body platform, the Grand Am was a hybrid between the Grand Prix and the Firebird Trans Am. That's where you get the name Grand Am. Uh, in 1973, the base price of the new Grand Am was $4,263.50. I can't imagine buying a brand new car for that kind of money. <laughs> That's insane. Uh, well equipped with a 455 cubic inch V8 air conditioning and other upgrades, it was still less than $6,000. Um, $6,000 will get you half of a Nissan Versa, a used Nissan Versa right now. Um, so just kind of goes to show. Anyway, but uh, we'll take a look at the back of the card. We won't really have to look too much at the back of the card for this guy because... 
we have seen quite a bit of this stuff. Uh, oh, this is interesting. Johnny Lightning commemorates the heritage of the iconic OK used cars signs that appeared in small towns to big cities beginning in the 1920s. People everywhere brought in their old car, traded towards a new one, or rolled off the lot with a professionally inspected used vehicle bearing the OK seal of quality. Huh, that's interesting. Uh, so this is our series for today. I know we didn't go over them too much. I, I, we looked at them, but we didn't really... Uh, so we got a 73 Grand Am, the 63 Galaxy, the 97 Firebird Trans Am, the 91 Z28 Camaro, a 78 Monte Carlo, and the 76 Plymouth Valair Roadrunner. Uh, that is an interesting one, the Valair Roadrunner. So that is our first car. For oh, oh goodness, what's going on over here? Okay. Having some issues with the uh, box over there, my box of cards. So moving on to our number two car on the list, there you go, number two, is the 1963 Ford Galaxy 500 in Champagne Poly. Can't forget about that paint code. A little bit of cat hair on it. So we'll get uh, go ahead and get this guy cracked open. All right, guys, so here we have our 63 Ford Galaxy 500. I was able to get the hood open on this guy pretty easily, although it doesn't want to open too far. We can do our same little trick where we bring the light down. Oh, look at that. And then go ahead and zoom in there. We'll bring this over. There is a nice look at what I believe is a 427. Uh, oh, look at that. There you go. License plate says 427. Excuse my nail. I uh, smushed my finger with a hammer, so it looks a little gross. Um, but there you go. Our license plate says 427, so that answers that. That's a 427 under the hood there. Um, I was going to say either 427 or 428. I do remember from the last time I talked about a Ford Galaxy 500. That is uh, what was under the hood of these guys. But very, very nice looking. Very good detail up in the front there. Our badging on the fender, you've got your Galaxy badge towards the back of the front fender there. Very, very nice. Go ahead and zoom back out to a... Uh, oh, I guess we could look at the interior. We have gold interior on this, like champagne interior. That uh, I guess that's supposed to be a shifter there. Looks like a hand grenade, maybe a potato, I don't know. Um, <laughs> That interior, that is quite, uh, quite champagne-y. A little extra for me, but, uh, I'm sure some people would like that. Very, very good looking car. I absolutely love the paint on this car. I do like the, uh, the exterior champagne color. <laughs> the interior is a little much. It almost looks like they just went over the interior with the same paint color as the rest of the car. Kind of funny. Um, there is your 500. Oh, can we see it? There we go. Your 500 badge on the uh, back of the trunk there. And then it does say Galaxy on there with the... Uh, across the top of the trunk, although it's a little hard to make out. You can just about, hold on, wait, here we go, here we go. Zoom, please, there we go. You can just about make out the A, the L, G, A, L, A, X, I, E, across the top of the, or the lip of the trunk there. Very nice, very good detail on this guy. Very nice, uh, I guess, yeah, I'm not, <laughs> never too big on the, uh, the Fords, but um, like I always say, the older they are, the cooler they are, and uh, I feel like a lot of people would agree with that. <laughs> we'll take a quick peek underneath, and uh, we do have our production date up here, 9-1-21, and this base is... Uh, I don't know, that base looks different from the average Johnny Lightning. Might be a uh, a Tomy base or like the uh, the RC2 
an RC2 in them. It might be a, a recycled base from one of them. So real quick, before I forget, go ahead and pull over our version A of the lift forward. Our version A of our 63 Ford Galaxy here. I do not quite remember the name of this paint code. I want to say it was like some black cherry or something. Um, the same license plate on this guy, the 427 license plate, but uh, I do kind of like the wheels on this one a little more. I am a sucker for the steelies with the chrome center caps. Uh, that looks awesome. Very nice looking cars though. There is both of, uh, well, two of my four Ford Galaxies, 63 Ford Galaxies. So we'll go ahead and get that guy back with the rest of version A, and this one over with the rest of version B. Oh, wait, no, put it back on the lift. We have a card to look at, before I forget. Uh, our okay facts for this guy, it says the Ford Galaxy was notoriously too heavy for racing. Time after time, it was lightened in creative ways to increase its power-to-weight ratio. Uh, demand for the Ford Galaxy peaked in 1963 with nearly 650,000 units produced. Um, that's probably why it's so hard to find a casting of anything other than a 63 Ford Galaxy, if I'm being honest with you guys. Uh, it seems that everybody and their mother makes a 63 Ford Galaxy, but nobody makes anything from like the uh, the late 60s or uh, 70s. I will try to get my hands on the Auto World Ford Galaxy because I do kn I know it's a different year. So that would be pretty cool to check out. But for now, I am very, very happy with that one. So we will keep moving right along into our next one here. We have the 1997 Pontiac Firebird Trans Am, the WS6 with the Ram Air hood. Um, this is 97, 97. I believe this is still an LT1. I believe, at least this casting is, these taillights are LT1. Um, those are LS1 taillights. I believe the Corvette got the LS1 in 97, but the Trans Am did not, uh, Trans Am and Camaro did not get the LS1 until 1998 when they got their facelift. So let's go ahead and get this guy opened up. All right, so here is our 97 Firebird WS6, uh, Trans Am WS6. Paint code on this guy is black, just black. <laughs> Um, I do have my version A over here in, I believe this is either torch red or bright red or some kind of red. Um, but I already pulled the other one over just because this is one of my absolute most favorite cars. Um, being a child of the 1990s, early 1990s, you know, to me growing up, this is what a Firebird, you know, this is what a Firebird is. Um, go ahead and take a look at our license plate. License plate says WS6, as well as our WS6 badge right there underneath the tail light. Um, very, very cool car. You could always tell the WS6 apart. It had the uh, Ram Air hood. Go ahead and zoom in. You can actually just about read the word Ram Air there on the hood, as well as our little Firebird down there on the front. Um, this could use... Oops, a quick wipe. Sorry, I was just noticing a lot of fingerprints on there. Um, as with uh, any black car. <laughs> but uh, just give that a quick rub down with a microfiber rag. It looks much better. Very, very cool car. I absolutely love this thing. So this is the LT1 as opposed to the LS1. I believe around 285 horsepower, but the WS6 made a little over 300 with the Ram Air hood. Um, so at speed, the uh, the Ram Air hood bumped them up a couple horsepower. Uh, very, very cool car. T56 six-speed manual transmission, LT1 V8. Uh, the LT1 was basically just a small block 350 with uh, a really, really, really stupid ignition design. <laughs> the stupid OptiSpark system was terrible. 
Um, but it was a cool car, and you can get good power out of them. Uh, but the LS1 was quite a bit superior with its coil-on plug design, or uh, I believe it's, I guess it's coil near plug. Um, very, very cool car, though, nonetheless. Absolutely love to have it in black. I do have quite a few of these, uh, these 90s model Trans Ams working their way into my collection at this point. Um, I have an entire miniature shelf full of them. They're on other shelves. I can see a few. <laughs> They're just everywhere. Uh, but a very, very cool car. So I'll go ahead and pull the version A over here. The uh, nice red and black combination. And like I said, I do have... Uh, the white lightning for these guys as well. So, oh, that's our, uh, there you go. Uh, bright red is the paint code for this one here. And these are the facts for this red one here. It says, this is the first time Johnny Lightning has released this newly tooled casting as a 97 model year. Uh, under contract to GM SLP, Street Legal Performance, built the Ram Air induction for the WS6. Uh, so that is your version A fun fact about the uh, 97 Trans Am. Now for our version B facts here. Uh, it says the front fenders of the 97 Firebird Trans Am WS6 were plastic to save weight. Uh, the, uh, the optional WS6 package increased horsepower of a Trans Am from 285 to 305. There you go, I just said that and bumped the torque from 325 foot-pounds to 335 foot-pounds. So you got a little something out of that WS6 package other than a cool badge on your back bumper. You got a little bit more power. And uh, certainly some bragging rights and a very cool hood. So very, very nice car. Very happy to always happy to add another one of these things to my collection. Absolutely one of my favorite Favorite, favorite castings from uh, the guys at round two. So we'll go ahead and get that guy parked up. Move that lift over there. And uh, we'll go ahead and put this with the rest of these. And keep moving right along into our 91 Chevy Camaro Z28 1LE in bright red. Again with the bright red. Um, very, very sought after casting. So we'll go ahead and get this guy cracked open. All right, so here we have our 91 Z28 Camaro with that Z28 wing on the back. You can make out just about the uh, little Z28 badge down there at the bottom of the front fender. Very good looking car. Nice white interior in there. Um, on the back we do have Z28 1LE as our license plate. Um, yeah, as I said, the third gen stuff, this is a third generation Camaro. Um, the scalpers went nuts for these. I was not able to find a single one of these, uh, either the red or the white, um, Camaros in stores anywhere. Uh, I had to go on to eBay to find one of these and I had to pay more than what I would have liked to have paid for a diecast car that was only released two years ago, one that uh, there were 18,056 of those made, but yeah, people went absolutely crazy for this thing, and uh, very, very hard to find in stores. <laughs> so... But either way, a very, very good looking car. Again, we do have our Z28 badge there on the back bumper as well. Um, I really like the third generation Camaro quite a bit. Very nice to have one in red. I think this is only probably the third, third gen in my collection. I have the, uh, this guy from the Auto World Deluxe series is in another Z28. However, I do believe this is an older one. Uh, yeah, I believe that might be an older model year or supposed to be an older model year. I'm sure it's the same casting, but, um... On the bottom here, yeah, 9-1-2021 for our production date. Same as uh, everybody else. And being that these are newer Johnny Lightnings, we don't have any year maker model listed on the base there or anything. So I do have the version A here in a nice, I believe that's a frost white. 
Again, not a white lightning, but you know, I'm sure people went crazy for the white lightning of uh, of these third generation Camaros. We'll take a quick look at our yeah same license plate on there as well. The Z28 1LE license plate seems to be the only real difference between the two is the uh, the actual color of the paint. So we'll pull this guy back over. Very good looking car. I do like the third generation Camaro quite a bit. Very uh, 80s, early 90s feel to it. Very, very 80s look. <laughs> very cool stuff. So we'll take a quick look at our card. Unfortunately, no opening hood on this guy either. Same as the uh, same as the Firebird. Okay, can I put that somewhere without hitting stuff? There we go. All right, so it says this is the first release of our newly tooled 1991 Chevy Camaro Z28 casting. Uh, so that's 2021. So this casting has been out for two years now. So uh, Chevy only built 478 units of the Camaro Z28 coupes with the 1LE option for 1991. If you don't know the 1LE option, I'm pretty 99% sure the 1LE option is a, uh, a suspension package and uh, very nice suspension package it is and a very very cool car very nice addition to the collection absolutely love 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 all my Camaros little raccoon eyes <laughs> cool wheels on there too I like the color matched five spoke wheels looks very good Gives it a very 1980s feel. Looks like wheels you would see on a Z28 Camaro. Very, very cool. So we'll go ahead and get that one parked up as well. We are moving right along here. We've got two of our OK used cars left to check out. We've got the 78 Monte Carlo, number five, and then last, number six, the 76 Plymouth Valera Roadrunner. So we'll go ahead and get the lift set up and get our Monte Carlo out of the box here. All right, guys, so here we go. Here is our 1978 Monte Carlo. We'll go ahead and bring the light down a little bit here so we can get a good look under the hood. Let's zoom that in a little bit. Come on, zoom in. There we go. Um, so that should be either probably a 305 or a 350 under the hood, depending on what you uh, opted for. Um, being in 1978, probably a pathetic, unmentionable horsepower you know, rating for that guy. As uh, you were at the uh, the peak of the um, emissions control chokeouts and whatnot of the uh, the mid to late seventies, really the death of the muscle cars. But um, regardless, at least it's a V eight. <laughs> Very good looking car. I really do like this paint a lot. Uh, this is a light blue poly. This is our paint code here. Nice, nice, nice metal flake with the uh, the white vinyl half top there. And then our license plate says 78 Monty. Um, if I'm not mistaken, that should be the same license plate. Yes, on the version A of this casting, which we have in a very nice black and red. Right here, very, very good looking cars. These are very uh, early on G bodies. Uh, the G body is really one of my favorite overall uh, <laughs> Monte Carlos. Well, I guess uh, really platforms in general. I like uh, the Buick G bodies. Oldsmobile's got some cool stuff with them. The Pontiacs, Monte Carlos, all kinds of cool stuff built on the G body platform, including the uh, the GNX, another very cool one. But uh, yeah, really, really like this uh, this light blue. That's really doing it for me. Although the black and the black and red here in the back looks very nice as well. So we'll go ahead and scoot that guy back a little bit. Get that parked. Take a uh, closer look at that interior. Again, the interior seems to be just kind of painted the uh, same color as the exterior. Which, uh, I guess I don't mind this as much with the blue. I like the blue a little bit better than that champagne gold interior on the uh, the Ford Galaxy. 
But uh, yeah, very, very nice looking car. Absolutely love that metal flake paint. Go ahead and take a quick peek underneath. Uh, it should be, yes, September 1st, 2021. It's our production date on there. Very good looking car. So we'll go ahead and uh, take a quick peek at our card. Uh, it says this is the first release of our all new 1978 uh, Chevy Monte Carlo casting. Third generation Chevy Monte Carlo was introduced in 1978. It's a full 15 inches shorter than the outgoing model year. Uh, yes, I would love to see Johnny Lightning do a mid 70s Monte Carlo. That is a really, really cool looking car. I absolutely love the mid 70s Monte Carlo. I might catch some flag for that. I know there were some people weren't the biggest fans of them, but I always thought they were super cool. Um, and there's your paint code there, light blue poly. So go ahead and get that card tucked into the box. Yeah, very, very nice looking car. One more good look at that guy. Hmm. Very, very nice. So we'll go ahead and get that one into the row here. And into our last uh, okay used car for today's video, we still do have the two Ford Galaxies that I want to open up. Uh, so this is a very cool car. This is a 1976 Plymouth Valair Roadrunner. Uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, Silver Cloud Poly. We'll go over the facts later. I started reading them while I was showing you the car. Let's get it opened up and out of the box. How about that? That sounds like a good idea. All right, guys, so here is our 1976 Plymouth Valair Roadrunner package. Uh, under the hood here, we do have a 360 V8. Um, reading a little bit about that on the card there. It does tell a little bit about that, so we will get into that in a moment. Uh, very nice looking car, though. I mean, it's not, it's, eh, you know, mid to late 70s stuff. Um, not super powerful, but still bright colorful fun to look at you know nice dark red interior almost uh is that more of a brown that's kind of like a saddle brown interior but the uh the black and yellow graphics look very cool on the silver and then as you can see just there in the background we do have the version a of this casting which i'll pull over momentarily so get a good look at this guy here. The hood does open very nicely on this one, so we can get a good look in there without exactly having to shine the light in, but I will still zoom in so you can get a good look at that. Um, yeah, so that is a 360, I believe it was still called the Magnum back in the 70s, 360 Magnum, or that might have been a, uh, a later thing with their trucks, I don't know. But um, yeah, very good looking car. Go ahead and get that hood closed there. Pull over the uh, version A so you can get a good look at it in a different color. Again, yellow and black graphics, but uh, a bit more of an orange color. Reddish orange with uh, cat hair on the windshield. But uh, there is your version A. Do a bit of a... Okay, yeah, that's the Valair badge on the fender. So, pull our card over here. We'll go through the OK facts real quick. It says, uh, in 1976, the Roadrunner was no longer a standalone nameplate. It was a trim and graphics package on the Plymouth Valair. Uh, the top engine option was a two-barrel, 360 cubic inch V8 offered, producing 160 horsepower. So, yeah, kind of lame. Yeah, mid to late 70s stuff. Um, keep in mind, though, that is, they were forced to put catalytic converters on, all kinds of different emissions crap, dragged the horsepower numbers down, and the, uh, the measurement system, they were no longer allowed to tell you, uh, like, crankshaft horsepower, I believe it was measured more as, uh, brake horsepower. So you imagine it's getting 160 horsepower, roughly 160 horsepower out of the back of the transmission down to the wheels. Um, of course, a four barrel and a set of long tube headers, and you would probably, you could probably get that car to 
push well over 240, 250 horsepower to the rear tires, which, you know, even uh, isn't an insane amount, but it's it's better than 160. <laughs> it's certainly better than 160. I'm sure if you pulled that 360 V8 out of this car, put it on a stand, put a set of headers on it, put a four-barrel carburetor on it, and measured the horsepower on an engine dyno, you'd probably see maybe in the 300 range, maybe low 300s. So you have to keep in mind the uh, the measurement system also takes a big, uh, has a big effect on your horsepower ratings. Uh, so quick peek at our license plate here. It does say R-D-R-U-N-E-R, -E Roadrunner. I imagine it's the same on the orange one. Uh, yes, it is the same license plate. And then we'll take a quick look underneath September 1st, 2021 for our production date. Very, very cool. Another Mopar for the collection. I absolutely dig it. So we'll go ahead and get that one put there and this guy over here and we will reload into our two extra 63 uh, Ford Galaxies here. So I'm actually going to open these both up at the same time, put them on the lift together, and then I'll, uh, I'll go over these muscle facts here for you guys as well. All right, guys. Um, wow, these things are sweet. So first up, we'll check out this uh, kind of the lighter bluish turquoise guy here with the schmutz on the roof. I might have to get a rag on that. Um, what a good looking car. This looks great. We'll go ahead and shine the light under the hood there so you can get a good peek under there. Again, that is our 427 cubic inch. These are all Ford Gal uh, 63 Ford Galaxy 500s. I do have my other two back here. So you can see them as well as this guy. So this one, first up, is, uh, when is this from? 20... 2019. This is part of the Cars and Coffee series. Uh, same release, actually, as... This guy here, if you remember the Corvair that we just saw a few videos ago. Um, they are from the same series. Very, very, very cool looking car. I absolutely love the color on this thing. Very nice looking. Some nice spoked wheels on there, little white wall tires. Overall, a very good looking car. Go ahead and get our hood closed there. And uh, let's see, what does our license plate say on there? Uh, Galaxy, but it's spelled with a Y instead of I-E. Um, don't ask me why it's spelled wrong. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. It's Ford. Maybe they didn't realize they spelled it wrong. But either way, really nice turquoise interior in there as well. Our paint code... For this guy since we do have a paint code as well as some muscle facts this is a pretty early round two cast or not a casting but a release being it's from 2019 uh, a new color for spring of 1962 peacock blue was unique to 1963 model years uh, ford produced 49,733 units of the 1963 galaxy 500 hardtop coupe so, very interesting. As, uh, as you can see, these are all, all the uh, galaxies we looked at today are all hardtop coupes. So, go ahead and get that card tucked in there. Very, very nice looking car. Um, take a quick peek underneath. Do we have, uh, here we go, 4-17-2019. So, April 17th, 2019 is uh when that guy's from and then we do have this much much older uh johnny lightning ford galaxy this is a much older release from 2005 this is part of the 60s sizzle 
Uh, if you can't tell how old it is, there you go. I think it was uh, $3.24, and then it might have gone on clearance for a dollar. Now you can't get one car for less than $10. Um, look at that. Yeah, it was a new casting back then, but this guy is from... Uh, where are we? Sorry about my nasty nail there. Uh, 2005 RC2. Uh, some of the other cars in the series, some cool stuff here. We got a 66 Mustang, 66 GTO, uh, 62 Lincoln, 65 Cobra, Daytona Coupe. I absolutely love those. I got a couple of them. And the 65 Volkswagen Carmen Ghia. I knew a guy who had one of those. It, uh, interesting car. Go ahead and get that card tucked away there. We'll go ahead and take a closer look at this more of a uh, seafoam green kind of color with the white interior and white vinyl top. Almost looks like a convertible top, or it could be a convertible top, but uh, I do think that is actually supposed to be a hard top. The hood on this guy does not really want to stay open, although we do have an orange engine in there as opposed to, uh, I believe most of these have had blue or silver, but, uh, yeah, another very, very good-looking Galaxy. Absolutely love it. Very nice-looking car. And a very, very nice addition to the collection. Uh, we have no license plate on this guy, as opposed to some of the other ones that did. Um, but you can see we do have our Galaxy badge and the 500 badge on the trunk there. Very, very nice. Very cool looking car. So that is uh, everything that I have to open for today. So I will go ahead and, uh, how are we gonna do this? <laughs> Let's get the rest of these galaxies. We'll go head over to the parking garage, get everything set up over there in just a moment here. All right, guys, so here we go, and you'll have to bear with me because I am once again trying a new technique with the parking garage. Uh, as opposed to moving the parking garage across the desk, I'm just moving my phone over here. But uh, starting from the left, we've got our 97 Trans Am WS6, our 91 Z28 Camaro, the 78 Chevy Monte Carlo, the 73 Pontiac Grandma with the Super Duty 455, and then upstairs, we do have all our Falcons, but of course, our Plymouth Valair Roadrunner. And then our three new Ford Falcons. And I do have the fourth one from uh, a while back. But uh, a very nice collection of Ford Falcons there. Some very nice color variations. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you found it interesting. I sure did myself. Very, very cool new cars for the collection here. Very excited to be adding this stuff in. And uh, maybe some new angles for you guys to kind of see some of the details that I've added to the parking garage over the uh, past almost a year now. We are coming up on a year that I've been on this channel. So we'll have to do something special, I guess. But uh, that's going to about do it for today's video, guys. So make sure you leave a like, leave a comment. And uh, let me know which car was your favorite one from today's video. And if you have any special requests, like these uh, these Ford Galaxies, um, let me know in the comments if there's anything you want to see. You know, guys, I'll, I'll hunt it down and see what I can find out there. I, I Honestly, it was kind of fun tracking down all these, well, these two extra Ford Galaxies. As I said, this one here was already in my collection. Uh, this one I purchased recently, and then after talking to... Uh, having that conversation about the Ford Galaxies track down those two. So I will keep my eyes out for the auto world casting and uh, I'd like to get that one on the channel as well. But that is going to about do it for today's video, guys. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Uh -huh.